this action is pretty much a little. Good evening, church. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to worship. Our second installment of Ash uh, Wednesday. Our first installment was at one o'clock. We were actually quite full. Every uh, This whole section is pretty much full this afternoon. So good news to that. It seems like a reunion of sorts, doesn't it? Like we're kind of like, welcome back, Cotter, or something. Um, let us continue our worship service with our confession and forgiveness of sin. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of one another. Most merciful God, God, we are in the work in progress. In spaces where we could cultivate belonging, we build up walls. In spaces where we can cultivate compassion, we insist on perfection and pressure ourselves to achieve the impossible. In spaces where we could go anger, we keep score, like a, our job to insist on eye for an eye justice. So today we pray, remind us how to cultivate hope, love, and justice. Remind us how to go from little fear perfection, hatred, forgive us, guide us, heal us, gratefully we pray, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I there declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into the dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth all prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, whom lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen may be seated. Good evening. The first reading is from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble and the day, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, 
return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is God? The Psalm will be read responsively, Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse the reeds. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in true death with me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled heart, a troubled and broken heart. O oh God, you will not despise. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter five. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true. 
as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Please stand as you're at. is from Matthew chapter 6. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to the, your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Put oil on your fed and wash your face so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Come on up, Axel and Helma, come on up. It's okay, unicorns can do this too. Come on up. See, these are the ashes that I'm gonna use to put on your forehead in just a little bit. Not right now, but we'll do it a little bit. And every ash has a story. This used to be something. Do you know what it was? It used to be fire. Good answer. That's true. Not the answer I'm looking for, though. But bef before it was fire, what was it? Do you have any idea? So if these ashes were burnt palms. So Palm Sunday is the Sunday before Easter. Do you remember that? Do you know that one? Where... There's this triumphant entry that Jesus is going in Jerusalem, and these people are on the road with their palms and their coats, giving praise and celebrating who Jesus is. And we call that Palm Sunday. It's the Sunday right before Easter. And we pass out palms to everybody in the church, and we sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, the highest king that is here. And we save some of those palms from that Sunday, and we burn them. They're dry, we use this coffee can, we go outside, we burn them, and we turn them in the ashes that we use on Ash, Ash Wednesday to start Lent, to start the journey into Palm Sunday and Easter. See, every ash has a story, a background. 
This ash started as praise and celebration. This ash started as a celebration of Jesus. And today it reminds us of the own ashness in each and every one of us. Today it reminds us that we too were breathed into by God in our own ashes to become alive. That today is more solemn, maybe sad. But to understand that these ashes came from joy and hope. And in a few weeks, we will see that joy and hope again with new palm branches, new voices, and new singing. But until then, we are reminded, reminded of our ash within. Let us pray. Dear God, give us, I give thanks for this Ash Wednesday and the remembrance of the joy in which these ashes came from. Give us hearts and minds to be respected, to be respectful of your word and your work through these ashes now. Amen. Thanks for coming up. As I said, every ash seems to have a story, a background. Ashes aren't made by themselves. They come from something or someone. There must be a story behind all the ashes in our lives. Maybe the, fan, the friendly campfire or the fire in our backyard, or maybe some of the basic things of the wood in our fireplace and the heat that we receive. Maybe it's the beauty of a candle, or it's the destruction of a possession. Every ash has a story. Every ash comes from flame, and every ash comes from something else. Sometimes ashes seem like a necessary byproduct of necessary flames. Sometimes ashes are the tragic result of the drama of life. Because every ash has a story. Sometimes the story of your ash is maybe the powerful overcoming of some adversity, like a productive scar from a cancer surgery that worked, or the simple charred remains of a paid off mortgage, which I don't think I'll ever experience myself. Maybe the ashes from the fireplace that are littered with some overcooked marshmallows, but the voices have been found in those ashes of wonderful fellowship and fun. Maybe the ashes of the field, a field that was burnt so that the invasive species that live there could be, could be replaced by native plants that can just grow stronger. And those ashes fertilize the soil and the land. Sometimes ashes cultivate new growth, new relationships. Sometimes the ashes symbolize simple losses for the sake of a greater gain. There are some trees, pine trees, with cones that do not plant unless there's fire. Sometimes ash great creates new life. Sometimes ashes hold pain, 
pain of life, the tragedy of death, the tragedy of death like an urn on the mantle of a loved one before, like the sound of sirens in a neighborhood full of houses when you realize in the morning that the burnt out house down the block had two young lives in it lost. Ashes can be cruel reminders of the failings of society. I lived on the east side of Detroit for seven years. Imagine this for the second. Many of you have been up to Minneapolis before. If you've been in Minneapolis, imagine that all of Minneapolis is vacant. The amount of vacant, burned out experience in Detroit is the same size as Minneapolis proper. Each one of those houses was someone's home. The failings of our society. We see plenty of bombed out buildings on our news these days. The ashes of our wars, the ashes of our aggressions, the ashes of our greed, the ashes of the desire of power over others. We see those bombed out buildings. We remember those gas chamber chambers. These ashes are a sign of the war without end within. We see the ashes of brook burnings and bannings, the ashes of giving away the word that has regenerated because somehow it is a threat to our own selves. We see the burning of crosses in years past as a threat to people's own safety. These ashes are a part of our culture and can be a sign of the deadness we have inside. But it could be as simple as the butt of a cigarette or a hit from a blunt. And each one of these ashes is proof that we are killing ourselves over and over again. Maybe these ashes are just another sign of how fragile we are. Every ash has a story. The story of God is found in the charred remains of generations of sacrifices made. But sometimes, sometimes there are pillars of fire and burning, burning bushes which don't lead to ashes, that lead to a greater movement of hope and liberation from our sin and our despair. Greater hope for the sake of the world and ourselves. Greater hope of the ashes within becoming, cultivating new ground for us. From the fire in which Jesus broke bread with his disciples and taught the word and the resurrection of the, of the candles that probably filled the last supper room. These ashes tell us about God's liberating work in us. The banishment of sin with the horrors of Christ's own death. In some ways, in some ways, these ashes tell the greatest story ever told. So as you receive your cross of ashes tonight, think about what your story is. What is your ashes? And what will your ashes tell? Think about how your ashes can help cultivate in you, cultivate you into a person you already are and into a person that you are becoming. As you were built with ash, God made you with a purpose and hope. Your ash is a part of the foundations of the world. 
and the foundations of the world that God is continuing to build and develop on. Maybe the story of your ash is full of heartbreak and pain. In that way, you're called to dust off and discard and let go of the ash that binds into you that causes death. Other than the cross on your forehead tonight, how has that cross been stuck on you? How has the burnt remains of things past stopped you from a full life? The cross on your forehead today symbolizes the grim reality that life here is full of liberating love and oppressive pain. And as the cross on your forehead begins a doorway into death, it also contains an exit sign from pain and into everlasting life here and now and evermore. So let us pray. Let us pray that God cultivates our ashes so that we are built into the joy and faith and life that God provides. Let us pray that we let go of our ashes, brush them off so that we are freed from their stain. Amen. I invite you to come forward by exiting to this side, coming through the line in front, and returning your seat to your left. Come and receive the imposition of ashes. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. 
from dust you came to dust you shall return. From dust you came to dust you shall return. From dust you came to dust you shall return. From dust you came to dust you shall return. From dust you came to dust you shall return. From dust you came to dust you shall return. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. Mr. Maimon, from dust you came, to dust you shall return. dust you came to dust you shall return from dust you came to dust you shall return from dust you came to dust you shall return from dust you came to dust you shall return dust you came to dust you shall return from dust you came to dust you shall return As you're able, please stand for our prayers. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Renew your church, O God. When we have drifted from our call to proclaim repentance and to guide your people towards justice, lead us back to you. Encourage believers to hold the church's doors open to those who have felt excluded. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renew your creation, O oh God. Transform parched places into watered gardens and preserve every creature that awaits the arrival of spring. Turn each and every one of us from practices of environmental exploitation and to become more responsible stewards of all that you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Renew our civic life, O oh God. Teach those in authority to advocate for the liberation of all who are oppressed and grant them courage to make difficult decisions. Renew your will in us, O oh God, so that war will be no more. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Renew our lives, O oh God. Spare your people from diseases of body, mind, and spirit, and send healing for those to overcome illness and grief. We pray especially for those found on our prayer page. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Hear us, O oh God. 
Renew this congregation, O God. During these 40 days of Lent, confirm our sense of mission and expand our imagination for ministry. Deepen our faith, increase our love, and draw us into the unfolding work of healing and restoration. Hear us, O God. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of the world that is in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share a sign of peace with our neighbors. Peace, everyone. And we pray, God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world a sign of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, giving you thanks that you've made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Jesus Christ, bread of life, those who come to you will not hunger. Christ, risen Lord, those who trust in you will not thirst. And we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. I encourage you to take our little chalices out that you received on your way in. The, holy of the, the holiness of the Ziploc bag unzip. Let us receive this communion. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. You have received Christ's body and blood. May it strengthen you and give you peace. Amen. Oh God, we give thanks. We give you thanks that you have set before us this feast. The body and blood of your son. 
by your spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as the bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. sit down for our announcements again thank you for joining us tonight at our ash wednesday services i invite you to turn to page 15 to kind of walk through what lent looks like here at lake edge lutheran church so starting next week we will have a 1 p.m service here in the sanctuary for ties a it's a more reflective worship service uh, with repeatable refrains, encouraged uh, meditation over Psalm 46, and at 1 o'clock each Wednesday. At 7.30, uh, after our joint Bible Bible study with Christ is All Rock and the UCC Church, after that we are holding a Visio Divina, which is using images in prayer. How to use images that go along with our Sunday reading, readings and reflect through art. And then on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m., we will have the traditional Holden Evening Prayer Worship Service that this congregation has grown to understand and to love. The rest of our Holy Week there is found uh, in our bulletins. Other things that will be happening, you can see in our Netflix, we have a, uh, a Lent calendar painting of sorts. You will receive a devotion, and each week you will paint part of the painting. It is a hope throughout Lent that by the end of your, our weeks, we will have fulfilled paintings that we can line our church with when it comes to your devotion. So go ahead, we, we have the devotionals available and different sizes of paintings uh, for calling for color you in. Also on Sunday mornings, we'll be practicing prayer through origami. The idea that we will ask of each other each Sunday morning, what do we want to cultivate and what do we want to let go? And you will write down on those pieces of paper and we will prayerfully fold those together and put them on a tree that is beginning in our narthex out there. When Easter comes around, those, the trees will be moved into our sanctuary to adorn and those prayers will be there for us then. So there are plenty of ways to be connected here at Lake Edge throughout the next few weeks and in Lent. So find a way to stay connected. Let us sing our sending song. Please stand as you're able.
thumb to forehead. That's how this begins. A thin dust reminder that life in time ends. So how do you and I want to spend our days? How do we live a life that weighs heavy with love and heavy with truth? Heavy with memories of laughter and you. This is what matters at the end of the day. Or is it justice and peace and the sound of your name? Thumb to forehead. Remember me again. That this precious life begins and ends. And like the trees and autumns, may I learn to let go. Making room in my heart for a new kind of growth. And change, a change in seasons, a change in me. Thumb to forehead, let it be. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.